Welcome to Freddie Run's Runners Connect podcast, where Freddie and Scott explore the world of running, fitness, and beyond. But before we dive into today's episode, a quick disclaimer. Whilst we love to share experiences and insights, we are not coaches nor nutritionists. So remember, nothing discussed here is intended as professional advice. Always consult with qualified experts for personalized guidance. Enjoy the podcast. There we go, and we're back, and we're back for a, another episode. This is episode number four um, of the Freddie Runs podcast. Um, feedback has been brilliant so far, so stupidly, we're back for another one. Um, I think, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and yeah, the, the 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 feedback we've been getting has been pretty damn good. I'll be honest; it's uh, it's just absolutely it was a little bit of a, a, a daft. Um, daft idea has slowly snowballed into something that that's given people content that they want to listen to weirdly which is just me and you chatting it's odd it's odd isn't it uh, good good to see you anyway scott yeah. um it is odd i i found the same so when the the feedback we're getting has all been good there was we had one comment that was of oh, you really you're going to go down that route um and i sort of said oh do you not like podcasts yeah. and he, he, i can't remember what he said but he said he basically said oh if you can do this then, then I'll listen, and and whatever that was, I can't remember what it was, but we did it, and so now hopefully that guy's listening. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and it, you know what, it's been really good fun, eh? It's I'm really enjoying it, um, and yeah, until it starts to bore the pants off everybody, then we'll keep going, I think. Um, yeah, and we've got a steady stream of yeah. people wanting to to contribute as well, which is uh, brilliant. We've got another guest lined up today. Before we introduce yep. them, um, can I just ask you how you you you? Your plans going, and we've seen the video about your PB attempt that wasn't quite there. But yeah, to be honest, that, no. that was a bit of a missold track, I think. I think so too, and and I, I hope when we get Steve Steve on shortly that he'll back me up on this one because Steve was there that day as well. Um, do you know what? It wasn't a hilly course. It definitely you wouldn't go there and quite be like Christ. There's some big hills here, mm. but they're long straights and they got a gentle incline on them. Um, and I'm going to use as many excuses as I can to say to you know admit. All right, I didn't get the twenty four thirty, but here's why. But no, it was. Um, I actually, am, when I look back at it now, I'm actually quite chuffed with how it went because it was such um, an open route. You could see. I'm not joking. There's one part where you must be able to see a mile ahead of you in a straight line, and that's the mile that you're going to yeah. run. And I didn't enjoy that. I found that actually quite hard because I could see the end of that mile, and that mile was higher than I was. Yeah. <laughs> you know that that point and that really it wasn't such um a, a physical thing it really played in my mind and and I, and I let it beat me actually I I, I did I, I walked twice um so when I look back at that and think about okay the course beat me up a little bit I ran I, I walked twice but I still got a 25 flat yeah I can't really grumble if you had that, like you taking know. into account the fact you've walked I think if you'd have, you'd have just yeah. kept plodding I think that that PB yeah. would have been smashed up, if I'm honest. Yeah, and and the problem I got now is I'm at that point now where it's it's 13 weeks to go for Endure mm-hmm. 24. So on Monday I have to start my Endure 24 training, otherwise yeah. I'm screwed. So I've, I've I've put a plan in place that starts Monday morning, which means come Monday I've really got to put the 5k behind me for now, and not worry about going for those times and whatever else because. One thing I really want to be careful of is doing it too many times is going to put me at a higher risk of injury, yeah. blah, blah, blah. Um, so I'm actually going to have give it another bash tomorrow. Um, I, I am going to go to Hartlepool Park Run tomorrow mm-hmm. morning. Um, I know you can't make it because your bloody family comes first <laughs> and all that. Um, whatever. You well, know. I need to cut <laughs> but, um, that out shortly. <laughs> 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 but uh, but no, I, I am I am going to go down there tomorrow. As long as I wake up tomorrow morning and the weather's yeah. okay, and we've had quite a lot of wind the last few days, and if it's really windy tomorrow morning, then I'm just going to put it behind me, and and we'll we'll have a look at it again in the summer. Um, but but one one more bash tomorrow. Uh, and we'll right now the goes. weather's pretty bad outside, and it is my local park run. Um, so if it's like this, and you wake up in the morning, I'd probably stick a pin in it and go to your local one and save yourself that that commute because it. Yeah. It's a fast course yeah. when the weather's nice, but when the weather's windy, because um, it's on the course right up against the sea line, it can be it can be a write off. Yeah. Um, but anyway, how was the legs anyway from after your your Mar- is it Margisons or Margisons Margisons? Yeah. Mar- Margisons. How, how the legs after yeah, Margisons miles. 
Uh, so those that don't know, it was Marcus and Smile on Saturday was a six-hour event, 2.6-mile route, as many times as you want within within that um, six hours. And there were people who did, did it once, twice, three laps, you know, and, and there were people that did over, over marathon. Um, I did seven laps, so 30K, thereabouts, 18 point summit miles. And after about three laps, I was getting a pain in my on the back of my quad. It's back sort of back backside sort of thing to the other quad. So it wasn't my hamstring, it was to the side of that. Um and it was I wouldn't say it was excruciating, but there was definitely a niggle there and, and I was like, oh god. So I carried on going. I was going nice and slow and I was being really careful. Um but then we got to a point I was like, okay, I'm I'm risking hurting myself here for a train what is essentially a training run. I I, I wasn't trying to do anything special that day. It would have been great to do a marathon, but I haven't trained for a marathon, so stop kidding yourself almost you know don't worry about that but i had really good fun um uh, yeah and like i say got got to 30k and decided actually let's let's call it off just in case and it was the right decision because the, the following day um or when i got home that night sorry that day i'm, I'm mass- massaging it and, and um, doing all that stuff got up in the morning had slightly stiff knees weirdly um which i don't normally get and i went for a jog and my leg's fine that 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 pain. I, I honestly think my that pain was just tiredness because we'd been running for eighty yeah. odd days at that point. You know, I'm on, I, and and I I hate myself right now because it's uh, seven thirty in the evening it. on the 29th, which which is a day eighty nine, and oh, I haven't been running man. yet. Um, <coughs> you're in the yeah. you're in the, so straight after the jeans this, again. Well, I've got the <laughs> jeans on right now. I mean, you can see that, but. Um, I might get changed, but um, yeah, I, I haven't been out yet. But I think ultimately that that was the pain I was feeling. It wasn't an injury or anything like that. I think my legs are just like, come on, Freddie, yeah, we're yeah. tired now. Which is you which know, is only um, natural and part of being human, I think. <clears throat> yeah, and, and you know what? The more the more I um, the more, more I, I actually nearly quit the the hundred day thing. Um, I, the, the running every day, I, I nearly quit a couple of days ago. And my wife said to me because it was quite late when I went out, and she said to me, "Are you sure?" And I was like, honestly, I, I, I really, I'm happy with what I've done. Um, I've done enough. I've done way more than I first planned because we first planned 31 days. Um, so yeah, I'm quite happy. And she went, go anyway, because if you wake yeah. up tomorrow and you haven't got to the hundred, you might be annoyed with yourself. And she was right because I woke up the next day and thought, oh, thank God I went last night. But I'm looking forward to getting to the hundred, and I will be stopping at hundred. My legs are tired. I'm feeling these little bits of pain while while I am doing mm-hmm. these longer runs, so I have to stop that and let my legs um, yeah. recover. Yeah. So we've got what two less than two weeks to go, and then I yeah. can stop. Well, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, still. But speaking yeah. of injuries, <clears throat> come on, so an update. Um, ITBS, I really eased off. Had really two really easy weeks and did bare minimum running, um, just on strength and conditioning, and I'm sick of staring at. This bloody thing, um, resistance bands. Been doing a lot of work with that around the legs, and um, seems to be paying off because I've done a couple of five k's this week. But last weekend on the Sunday, the final long, long run of a marathon, Manchester marathon training, I had to do a twenty miler and um, took it really slow, like almost like a shuffle. But it, it was running, and um, I did it. It's the first yeah. I've ever run, and the mental block I got from the week before when I had to pull up after thirteen miles, it was, it was in my head. Um, so I thought, let's just take it really easy that week leading up to it. And then last Sunday, um, we had managed it, managed 20 miles and over the bloody moon, I'll be honest, um, huge tick in the box. And again, I've just took it easy this week, uh, done more yoga and a um, bit of bike, um, swimming, just trying to do other things other than pounding the pounding the pavements. So I've done a couple of 5Ks. Um, I'm going to attempt a long run this Sunday, but I'm over the moon because the long run now is tapering. And I think it's I've only Brilliant. got to do, and this sounds insane, me saying this, but I've only got to do twelve miles on Sunday, and I'm I'm buzzing with that, <laughs> um, just the twelve yeah. miles, which is crazy to think a year ago I couldn't have done two, um, so yeah, over the moon with that, and uh, all on all on track, back on track, and I'm not going to overestimate it and say I'm oh, back to full health and I'm going to smash four hours because that was my original plan, but now I just want to get round and I don't want to push it for these two weeks ago and hurt myself and put it all back to square one so yeah, yeah. touch wood i'm uh that's in the right direction so it sounds really positive man i'm really chuffed for you genuinely i'm really yeah, really, really happy for you i mean after after your half marathon result 
a couple mm. of weeks back and and then going on your because i know you're worried about that 20 mile really was yeah um you, you, you yeah you text me a couple of times about it and you were like you know what i'm just going to go for it yeah. see what happens and and you went with one of your friends on I did that, I went right? for, with uh, with a girl from work mandy she's uh she's an avid runner and uh hopefully we'll get her on a podcast at some point but um yeah she's part of a, a, a running community over in south tees and um yeah we, we picked up along the route we picked up a few fellow runners that were out for their sunday long run at different points so it started as the two of us and i think we finished there was yeah. five or six of us by the end of the run uh, they were all just doing a loop so Amazing. it worked really well and talking to someone around there is a lot easier for me i noticed i get distracted quite easily yeah yeah yeah, yeah it worked i'm like <laughs> but that's <clears throat> I'm, uh, and that's half the battle isn't it as soon as, soon as you get someone to talk to it, that's half the battle it, it just because then the distance just goes like you know I've, I've been going to i obviously joined yeah. the running club um a few a couple of weeks ago and i've now been to my last night i went to my third my third session and again it's we don't go far we don't go fast i actually think i need to move up to the next group um because it was almost too easy um we're, we're running between 11 and 12 miles uh minute miles sorry um for a for like five and a half k so so a really nice gentle zone zone i bounce between zone one and zone two but what i really enjoy about it is there's just a group of about yeah. 10 of us in that in that that team or that group and everyone's just chatting the whole way around and you're like oh yeah. christ we finished that was well, quick you know and actually it weren't it weren't quick it lasts about 40 minutes or so but it just that's goes nowhere Sunday. we were all just chatting away and before you knew it we were back i mean before you know it was three and a half best part of four hours but it didn't feel like a four hour 20 mile slog if i was on my own i'd have been arguing with myself i'd have been trying to take shortcuts home you know <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, and, and and that that's another thing i want to do i don't know if i'm going to do a video or, or maybe we do a podcast about it but i really need to talk to people about running clubs and my opinion has changed massively on i never i was never against running clubs i just didn't think mm. they were for me but um i've done a massive u-turn yeah, on good. that that's, that's a great. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll talk about that in in, in a, another episode coming up. Um, but I guess that takes us on to getting our this week's this guest week's on. Um, yeah, and I'm not going to do an introduction because I'll let him do that as soon as my mouse starts working again. Oh, and I will bring him to the uh, to the stage now. So uh, please welcome Steve. Steve, how are you? Hello, I'm good, thanks. And how are you too? Fine, yeah. All right, all good, all better yeah, for seeing yeah. you, mate. <laughs> thank you i am yeah. better than i was last time i saw you well yeah we'll get into that it, it will get into that in a minute because again i want your i want to know how that went for you but i also want your bloody opinion on that route we'll talk about <laughs> yeah, that in a yeah. Minute. that's yeah. fine yeah <laughs> but but steve um obviously I, i've met you a few times now at, at events um you've, you've met scott this evening but tell everyone else that's listening to this who you are and what, what you're about mate uh name's steve cummins um i'm old <laughs> um i've got long hair and i run because i can't do much else these days there you go that about sums it up it's what i'm yeah. reduced to steve your hair's fantastic honestly my first question for you is how many bottles do you take in the shower because i am jealous as hell i have got not a hair on my head now <laughs> um do you want an honest answer to that or do you want <laughs> honestly uh, i'm not going to tell you how long i actually spent before this podcast <laughs> <laughs> oh honestly let's just say that um ghds were involved brilliant <laughs> <laughs> it's sad i know what that means as well because i've been a dad of two two girls i know exactly what that is yeah yeah so steve a bit about your your background mate because i know you didn't come straight into running um through running you you, you came through other avenues it may be a similar story in some respects to jamie on on the last episode that we did but uh... um yeah in a lot of respects take it right back at school i hated running with a vengeance um my sporting life started off with badminton cricket golf because my dad played so i got into that uh, and i was decent at them all um you know played to a fairly decent standard um right through school in the university certainly badminton and, and cricket through university um then past university badminton more unfortunately at that point i started getting knee problems um and i think i've had i had five different um cartilage operations on both knees in the space of about six or seven years wow 
Um, just arthroscopy is just cutting away bits of cartilage out with damaged and torn. Um, physio said, that's it, you know, you're never going to run, you're never going to do anything like that. So fair enough, live with that. And rather like Jamie last one, I, I took up cycling, non-impact, um, kept me fit, um, started off tootling around on a, um, a sit up and beg bike, bike for want of a better term. Um, but then got the bug and started buying road bikes um, and then time trial bikes um, and going, I'm guessing exactly the same as what Jamie did. Um, and then cross training as part of that, I started doing a little bit of running on a treadmill, which is to my side there, if you can see it in the mm-hmm. background, yep. um, was absolutely terrified to go outside. I had major imposter syndrome. I think, Scott, you said you spent about two or three months uh, on the yeah, treadmill. Exactly. I spent about I spent about two or three years wow. oh, on really? the treadmill, um, not going outside at all. Um, what What was that, Steve? What What was it that you were worried about? Um, I was slow, and right. you'd say, you know, I know you, you in the introduction you mentioned clubs. I live relatively close to both where Gated Harriers is and where Jarrow and Heben are. And you'd see the groups out and they'd be going like a million miles an hour. Yeah. And it's like, I can't do that. <laughs> um, I really, really can't do that. Um, but then, unfortunately, my, um, my mother got Alzheimer's. Um, so I decided to try and raise money for the Alzheimer's Society. Um, okay. And as part of that, well, first, the first thing, Scott, you'll hate me for this probably. The first thing that I did and what raised more money is I got all my hair shaved <laughs> off. Just because you can. Um, <laughs> and it, it, it was a lot longer than this at the time. There is a video on YouTube if you want to go and search it. Steve Cummings haircut. And I'm not certain who was more nervous, me or the girl who was actually cutting it. And it literally went from like, probably twice as long as this to shave yeah, yeah. completely bald oh, wow. um people won't need to search for it just go down in the description we'll yeah. stick a link there i'll find it, it, it's, sure it's, it. it's 11 years ago but it's still on there um and as part of that so like okay i'll, I'll do some athletic stuff as well so i did a couple of duathlons um but then the first running race i actually did was the great north 5k Yep. Um, and I know you did that last summer, Freddie. Um, Correct. Exactly the same route, and I think I ran about twenty-eight minutes for it, and I was over the moon. I'd broken thirty minutes. Yeah. Brilliant, marvelous. Move on a year, and I'll do a bit more for the Alzheimer's Society. And thought I'll do the Great North Run. Um, so started training for that, and actually getting outside. Um. Fantastic preparation for the Great North Run. So that week that I did my very first Great North Run was what was called a Hell Week. So I started off on the Sunday doing a hundred mile bike ride around the Malvins. Wow. Um, then I did London to Brussels on the bike for the Alzheimer's Society. Came home on the Saturday. I rode a stage of the Tour of Britain from Jedburgh to Dumfries, something like that. Um, got back from that at about two o'clock on the Sunday morning to have to do the Great North Run the next day. Um, yeah. Bloody hell. And got round it. Uh, I think I did about two hours, six, something like that. Uh, right. And I was just over the moon. I actually ran it all. I didn't stop. I didn't walk. And then had a week off work to recover from it all. Um, but that sort of set the bug. In 2013, I've missed one Great North Run since then. I've done them all. Uh, and just love it. The atmosphere is fantastic. Um, fantastic, that. Still never took running massively seriously. Uh, mm. It was just something that went alongside the cycling. Um, and then 2017, I had a really bad cycling accident. Um, smashed up my shoulder. Um, had part of my shoulder blade cut out, my collarbone cut out. Um, and just struggled to hold a time trial position anymore. Can't put the weight through mm. shoulders. So, okay, I'll take running a bit more seriously. Um, And from somewhere, I went from having a personal best 
in sort of like half marathon of about 150 to within 80 months i think i'd done 134 wow um, Lion. and then i got seriously hooked on running at that point it was just the new obsession um, is that is that because you saw a, like a big jump that was like oh i could be good at this um i don't think i'm good at it i think i'm i'm okay um, but yeah. I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop, stop you right there. Stop, stop you right there. I'm gonna stop you. <laughs> right, yeah. And I, I'll tell you why I'm gonna stop you because. Yep. What? What? Firstly, what is good? Um, yeah. Because you, you know, and I know, I know, you will say that you know the next level above you is good, and the person that, that is at that level is gonna say, "Oh, Mo Farah's good." It, there's levels to it. I get it, but but you're definitely good <laughs> in Thank my you. eyes, anyway. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no, that, that's fine. Uh, no, I totally get it. And I think the one thing I've learned to be is I'm not competitive with other yeah. people. Right. As I've got older, I've, but I am competitive with myself. Um, cool. So I, I challenge myself, and that's what I. That's I guess the reason why I can't not do a sport because yeah. I always like to challenge yeah. myself, and running just became the new obsession. Do you know what? There's a theme. I, I like. That. I was going to say there's a, there's a theme with these cyclists, Freddie. Um, Jamie was the same. He loved bikes, but he listed the injuries he's received and transitioned to running because of those injuries. Maybe, maybe we right. advise you just cut out the cycling to begin with and just go straight to running, <laughs> and you'll keep all your limbs attached. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, yeah, probably. <clears throat> I, I, it hurts less falling over yeah. running than it does cycling. Let's put it that way. That's fair. That is fair. All right. Um, I guess Steve. Um. Yeah. We'll, we'll go forward a little bit now. Now, I, oh shit! Sorry, someone's just come off my computer. <laughs> sorry, there we go. It nearly, it nearly, I nearly reloaded the whole page. Um, it's because I'm moving around on a chair. Um, I want to jump straight now forwards and and talk about last week. But, but I guess before we do, let let us know your. I just because I'm interested, and this isn't to like. Well, I don't know why, but what are your PBs at the moment? What's your five, your ten, and and your half and your full? Race or overall? How, however you like. Okay, race five k is twenty minutes and eight seconds. Wow. Um, not in a race, nineteen minutes and thirty-seven. Well, that's the one that counts, right? Um, well, no, it was a very favourable route with a tailwind. <laughs> and he had, roll, and he had roller blades on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> something like that. Ten k race forty-three seventeen. Um, not in a race, forty-one fifty-seven. Um, again, a very favourable route. Um, half marathon is in a race is one thirty four seventeen, I think. Yep. And marathon three twenty five and change. Not too shabby, eh? Road runner. <coughs> Not too <coughs> shabby. Yeah. Wow. Right, Steve. Yeah. Let's so yes. jump forward now. Northumberland yep. super fast event that we both attended <laughs> yes. it last week or the week before, whenever it was. Um, obviously, I did the 5K and yep. you did the half marathon. How'd it go? Or not. It? Um, go? it didn't, unfortunately. Um, first of all, I will concur with yourself that it is not the easiest route in the world. Thank you. Um, <laughs> it is bland, I think. And it gets certainly on the half marathon. And I feel sorry for the people doing the 30K on that day. Um, Shout out so, to Jamie Davison. Yeah. Um, six loops of, of that course. There's no spectators cheering or, or shouting apart from maybe 50 meters in the, the home straight. Um, you are absolutely on your own um, on a course that is, as you rightly said, you know, you can see miles in the distance and it's demoralizing at yeah. times. Um, and there are these interminable, I wouldn't call them rise, hills, but rises. Um, and I think that starts from the, the tip, from the gun. The very first section of it is um, very slightly uphill. I think from the taxiway onto the runway. Yep. Um, and you just think, God's sake, don't go too fast because you'll kill yourself in the first 200 meters. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, it didn't go for me, unfortunately. Um, I actually cramped my left calf up in bed on Friday night. Don't know what it was. I just twisted and my calf just completely tightened up. 
Um, and like yourself, I use massage gun. I've also got compression boots. Um, I did everything for a day and a half, ran a very gentle park run and was all right ish and thought, look, I've entered this, I'll give it a go. Um, set off at a more like marathon pace. Um, so I was running like four, 445, 450 kilometer pace. Um, got around two laps and I could just feel it. And I thought, this isn't an A race. Mm-hmm what what have I got to gain by finishing? Mm-hmm. Um, so I stepped off and, luckily enough, stepped up just in time to see you finish. You did. You did, yeah. You were right by the finish line, which was nice. Yeah, so, yeah. it was, you know, it it was all right. I did 10.5K at sort of like 4.48 pace, but it just wasn't worth yeah. pushing on. And these things happen. Um, didn't beat, Don't beat myself up around it there are far more important goals later on in the year and i've had enough injuries in the past to realize that it's better safe than sorry and how how is it now how does it feel now absolutely yeah. fine honestly sort of like two days later it was absolutely fine um it's just one of those things you know just put your leg the wrong way yeah. in bed twist the wrong way or whatever and it just goes yeah that and that's pretty much what happened to me a while ago and it, it was the dog was at the top of the stairs and I stepped over the dog, twisted me back and, and I couldn't run that day. This this was um, the end of last year. It's just that one little thing that you do and you think, ah, sugar, shouldn't yeah. have moved like that. Yep. It's innocuous, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Can't even say it's an age. But you, you, <clears throat> I was just because you can't even blame that on an age thing. It's just pure unlucky, isn't it? It could happen to anybody, that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. Yeah, I'll blame age. I get away with it. <laughs> 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 but you just mentioned there, Steve, um, bigger plans later in the year. Yes. We're really, I'm, I'm really keen to talk about this. Um, tell us what, what you've got to do, what, what you're up to later. So my A goal race this year is Chicago Marathon, um, which luckily with that time I had mentioned earlier, 325 for the marathon, that got me a good for age qualifying time for Chicago um, and hopefully Boston as well. Um, so I got into Chicago without having to worry about ballots because I never get in anything on a ballot ever. Um, so yes, off to Chicago, October 13th, um, to see what the Windy City brings. That's going to be good fun. Have you done any stateside marathons Um, before or is this the first one? No, it'll be, to be honest, it'll be the first marathon major I've done. Um, 12, 13 years trying to get into London, never managed it. About yeah. four or five years into Berlin, never managed it. Um, they're obviously the two majors, yeah, Europe-wide. Yeah. Um, and I just thought, I've got a time for Chicago and Boston. Let's do it. I don't know about Boston yet, um, because obviously, although Boston has a, a minimum qualifying time, they also it also depends on how many people have that mm. time and if there's far more it is fastest first so i think this year right. it was seven minutes under the minimum qualifying time got you in um gotcha. so you know anyone who's listening out there if you're in my age category please don't run a fast marathon between <laughs> now and <laughs> september that would be epic wouldn't it to get both I think, of those yeah it would be, it, i think if i if i can get those two done um not too bothered about new york um i think that's very hilly <laughs> if i start off up the bridge sort of like up a 10 percent incline um so those two would be brilliant and then one day london and berlin how does that work logistically so obviously you've got to get to chicago you've got to find yep. some digs and, and whatever yep. else is that like your typical oh there's an event on let's put the prices through the roof um I was probably quite lucky because I didn't have to go through the ballot. Um, so I was able to book probably earlier than most people. So the ballot for Chicago was open for a month. And then, so I think it opened just after last year's race. So about October the 12th or something, it opened. It closed November the 12th. And then you find out the beginning of December, whether you've got in. But because I was lucky enough to have a good for age, I put the entry in on the 12th of October. I found out by the 14th of October that I was in. Brilliant. Right. Um, so I was able to book at that point in time. I'll be honest, I booked accommodation ahead of that just on a book and 
you got the full cancellation rates on it. Yeah, of course. Um, so I did that. Um, the flights I didn't book because they're not refundable um, until actually after I had a place. So it's pricey. It's not a cheap excursion yeah. for what is basically I fly out on the Friday and I fly back on the Monday. Right, um, long weekend, basically. So it's a long weekend um, with a 5K on the Saturday. Because they do a five k, they do a five k shakeout yeah. run in yep. Soldier Park, I think it is Soldier Field, where the where um, Chicago football team plays, American oh, okay. football team play. Cool. Um, they do a five k shakeout run, so I'm doing that on the Saturday morning, marathon on the Sunday, fly back stupid o'clock Monday morning. Right, nice. And um, actually spend my birthday in the air. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> Which is quite good. Oh. Um, but hey, it, it'll be worth it. I say, I have been to Chicago before. It's a lovely city. Uh, yeah. Absolutely loved it, and I'm just, yeah, I'm just so looking forward to it. Oh, and really that good. one, whether I'm injured or not, I will yeah. get around. Okay, so is that a, a, that is that's your A race, like you're saying? Yeah. And no matter what, you'll be you'll be going for it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, right. I'm not going. You know, I there's no get out now. Flights aren't refundable, so I'll be there. Come yeah. on, me. Yeah. Talking about the the. We touch on this with Jamie as well. Um, what are your views on on fueling and how do you fuel for a marathon? So, given you're slightly quicker than uh, mine, Freddie standard, we we have time to open a gel and enjoy it and absorb it. When, <laughs> when you're cruising at like four sixty per km, how do you do? You, do you do the gels? Do you how do you plan for your fueling? Absolutely, absolutely. Um... So generally, I will take one about 15 minutes before we start, um, and then one every 30 to 35 mm. minutes. Um, and if okay. it goes wrong, it goes. if you don't fuel, um, it's the end of the road. Yeah. Um, horror story, and I'm sorry, Scott, I know you've got Manchester <laughs> coming up. Um, Manchester last year, this is just the epic tale of it all going wrong. Um, so I've used SIS gels, other gels are available, uh, for years, never had a problem with them. Um, so set off in Manchester, I was actually aiming on that day for about a 323. That was my target. Um, first, and I was actually running it in blocks. So I was running sort of like 4k on quick, 1k slow and, and actually blocking it yeah. like that. Um, and I was taking a gel, um, sort of like at the end of every second, sort of like 4K block, if you will. Um, first one, no problem. Second one, I opened it, took it down, and unfortunately just came straight back up. Right. Um, don't know what happened. Not a clue. Um, but then I couldn't get any more gels down after that. I struggled to get any more fuel down me. My stomach was just rebelling. Yeah. Um and I hit 38k, and I was on target at 38k. Um, and then I hit the proverbial wall. Oh man! And honestly, I don't know if you've, if either of you have hit the wall before. I've, I've read about it and heard um, about it. I'm waiting for it to happen. Yeah, it's it's the second time in my life it's happened to me. The other time was on a bike ride, um, but first time it's happened to me running, and I went from doing about 440-ish pace uh, on average. The next kilometre, that 39th kilometre, was 7 minutes 20. Wow, it knocked you off you. <laughs> right. Um, so I literally fell off a cliff. And those last four kilometres took me from being on target to run about 323, 324. I ran 338. Right. That's how much it impacts you. So fueling... <laughs> <laughs> fueling is yeah. to me you've got to yeah. practice it you've got to get it right um and then you know i think i've said somewhere on on strava or whatever before on in comments you know sometimes race day is out of your control mm. yeah. you do everything you can up to race day but race day it's in the lap of the gods um you just have to get yourself to that start line in the best possible yeah. position and then hope that everything goes right yeah. on the day. 
and sometimes right. it doesn't. Yeah, I, I find um, my ADHD kicks in when I'm running, and and I forget. I just simply forget to fuel, and then I, I get sort of an hour later. I'm like, oh Christ! I now know that I'm going to pay for this because once you get beyond a certain really? point, you, you're almost it, it's it's inevitable, yeah. isn't it? You've, you've got and I've got to figure out. And I, I welcome anyone that's got any good tips for that. I, I know some people have said, oh, "I'll get your your watch to beep and all that," but I I very rarely hear my watch beep. I, I actually um, I'm a hearing aid wearer. When I take my hearing aids out when I'm running, you, I don't hear my watch beep. You know, um, and I, I'm trying to come up with a, a solution that helps me um, remember a fuel. Can I, I, I'm, I'm, can I, I give you I a know solution? how to, but go on, go for it. Sorry, I'm going into solution mode here. Sorry, this works for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you wear headphones when you run, yeah? I've seen you with your earbuds yeah. and stuff in. Have you got audio prompts from Garmin Connect set up? Every kilometer. So I set that up for, in a marathon, every eight kilometers. And when it tells me in my headphones, that's when you take a gel. Uh, okay. Put into, I got you. So change my setting to, I, I have it, I, I'll be honest, I've got it to every kilometre because that's that's the setting it came with when mm. I turned it on and yep. I've never changed it. Does it actually give you the prompt in your, your earbuds? Yeah, it will say yeah. kilometre one, yeah. nine minutes 32. Yeah. <laughs> you, can, um, you can change that and if you change it to the, the estimated time that you think it will, or the distance that you think, or even you can actually, I think you can do it by time as well. Um, right. And then when that goes off, it's time to take a gel. Gotcha. There you go. Gotcha. That worked for me. It may not work for everyone, but that's how. Just yeah, give me it. one second. My my uh, laptop plug is not plugged in. I've just realised I'm about to die. <laughs> just talk, talking about yourself. Keep talking. <laughs> so are you? So Scott, if I may ask yeah. you a question, are you looking forward to Manchester? I, I am. Um, very similar. I got into this situation, very similar reason to you, yourself and your, your your background there. So I'm doing it for Alzheimer's as well because my dad has early onset dementia and I thought, I finished a great enough run and I thought, this is the first I've ever ran, but I want to go further. I want to do a marathon now. And I went down the rabbit hole quickly of finding out marathons in this area and I thought, I'll never get into London. And then Manchester, I lived in Manchester for five years and studied there at university. I love the place. I've got a lot of friends back there and I thought that would be perfect. And then I thought, I'll do it for a good cause as well. So I'm doing it for Alzheimer's and the Alzheimer's shirt arrived the other day. Um, the, 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 the funding page is up and running and I've, I'm kind of like scared when I was injured and I've been dealing with this injury. I was worried that I couldn't do it because of the pressure of the, the sponsorships. So I kind of was, I was like, yo, it's going to, it's like Chicago. I will walk over that finish line if I have to, I will, I'll be yeah. doing it. So I'm looking forward to the challenge. Um, but I'm also a lot more confident now than I was prior to last Sunday. That big, long 20 mile run has mentally made me a lot more um, assured that it's, I can do it, you know? Um, Fantastic. Yeah, definitely a lot. And a great course. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Two birds, one stone. And then as you've probably heard, Freddie's talked me into Endure 24 for next year <laughs> off yeah. the back of this. So yeah, just tick this one off and then I've done a marathon and then we'll see what happens in, in the summer. Um, <clears throat> well, I can't wait for that, by the way. That's going to be the one. Endure 24 in 2025. That's going to be cool. And there's still still time for us to get Steve yeah, coming on. Yeah, I want a crew. Yeah, we should get a Runners Connect crew for that. It'll be brilliant. We'll get a team together. Yeah. Um, we're going to have to yeah. buy a lot of new trainers yeah. for that as well. Oh, he just said yeah. He just said he literally just said yeah. <laughs> let's let's and see how. Video. Yeah, go on. If if <laughs> yeah, I'll do it. There we go. Get in there. I've never done it. Here we go. My my really? sister-in-law does them. My father-in-law, who's seventy odd, does them. In fact, my father-in-law, seventy-six, seventy-seven, he's doing race to the stones this year. Oh, man, that's Amazing! Close. Wow. Um, hundred kilometers. He's going to Jeff it. Yeah. Um, but 77 and he's going to do race to the stones that's unbelievable that's well done him um, right this next topic yes. is something that we've discussed before um, me and Scott and I'm really glad that it's you that we're going to have this conversation <laughs> with and, and, and the reason is I don't know if you or well, you will remember this but we obviously have the Strava group Runners Connect Yep. And quite early on in that group, Steve, you posted a, a post on there that basically said, I've got all these shoes <laughs> yeah, um, that are worn, that I've used, 
if anybody would like them, like to try a pair, this is the yeah. size that I've got. This is what I've got. This is how many miles each shoe has done. Yeah. Um, let me know. And generously, you were like, you can have them. You just cover the postage and, and you guys can have these shoes, which was amazing, yeah. first of all, that you even did that and, and offered those shoes up. But what was more amazing and the bit that I really want to talk about is what percentage of your salary do you spend on <laughs> shoes? Because some of these, these weren't, these weren't um, kind of start fitness off brand trainers. These are really good shoes that, that you were, you were given away. And the reason you were giving them away is because you've got even more really good shoes and really expensive shoes. And I really want to get into that with you. How much do I spend? You can bleep it out if it's going to get you in trouble. How, how much? How how much are those shoes that were on your feet at the super fast Northumberland thing? The other two hundred and eighty-five. <laughs> can I tell you something else? Good. I don't even know if I like them. Oh, I told Scott that. <laughs> I said to Scott, he's not even that keen on them. <laughs> there's a there's a long story behind that, and. Um, so it's a pair of Alpha Fly 3s, which is what I was running in at the super fast. I absolutely adored the Alpha Fly 1s, absolutely loved them. Um, my first pair of Alpha Fly 1s um, have 400 odd miles in them. They're, they're not any good for racing anymore. You could train in them, and I still use them on the treadmill, but right. can't race in them. My second pair of Alpha Fly 1s. I've got about 200 and odd miles in them. I'd probably use them for a non air race. Um, bought the Alpha Fly 2s, hated them with a vengeance, hated them. Yeah. Managed to move them along um, and thought so the Alpha Fly 3, the design of it, excuse me, um, has gone very much like the Vapor Fly. Um, so you don't have a decoupled outsole anymore, it is one long um, outsole um i'll try it but you know i'm just not certain no um i'm really really not certain and i don't know it's whether it's because i'd only done i think i'd done like a 10k training run in them before that super fast um uh, whether it was because i had a weakness in that calf on the day uh which i was running favoring my right leg so i was getting a bit of pain in my right achilles I don't know. I will give them another go. I won't move them on straight away. Um, right. But yeah, I'm I'm not certain. But to answer your question, probably not as much now as I did a year or so ago. Right. Okay. Um, but probably too much. If you got someone that might be listening to this podcast, is what that why you just answered it like that? I don't do no. <laughs> um, not at all. Not at all. Um, no. I don't think it's possible to high choose. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, you know, to be honest, if you could actually see to the side of my desk um, where I'm sitting, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve pairs of trainers stacked up at the side of my desk at the moment. Amazing. Um, and then more upstairs in wardrobes, and they're now, just live ones at the minute. Now, what I'd like to know, because obviously you do this for a reason, that they're, they're, yep. they're obviously a lot of these more expensive shoes make a difference. Um, I'm just really trying to get a, a sort of layman's terms of, of how big a difference do uh, uh, you know do they make, or is it is it a psychological thing? Do you just enjoy it? Because some people just like to enjoy having nice things and spending money on on good stuff, or do you physically feel a difference? Or your do your times reflect that you've got that shoe on? Um, I think the reason actually goes back to cycling. So right. cyclists, as I'm sure Jamie might have mentioned we are very tech orientated um you look at sort of like tour de france with all the skin suits the pointy helmets they've got on power meters whatever um and i guess a lot of that tech innovation is moving to other sports now um do i think it makes a difference i think the carbon plate and the forms absolutely do um so going back to what i said earlier when i started running I ran for years in Asics GT 2000s. Um, right. I picked two pairs up from Start Fitness in a sale. Um, I had about 15, 1600 kilometers in each of them. Uh, one pair blue, one pair orange. 
and ran in them till they were dead. Mm-hmm. Um, from there, I moved on to buying stuff from Decathlon. Uh, and actually, you know, they're not bad shoes. The Kip Run shoes, they're not bad at all. For the price right. that you pay for them, um, yeah. they are actually, they are they are good. Um, and the same can be said for a lot of Decathlon's stuff. You know, for the price you paid, it's a it's a good value and, and not a bad product. I'll just jump in there quickly. I've, I've recently just bought a pair of Decathlon running underwear. Yeah. Um, and absolutely love them. Um, I, I run mostly in the shorts I wear. I've got the built in, the built in sort of cycling short thing, whatever yeah, you yeah. call it. They've got that, but I've got some that don't. And I was getting a bit of chafing. Their underwear, love it. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Um, Sorry. I, no, I still use Decathlon quite a bit of their stuff in t- for training, certainly, um, yeah. be it in terms of, of singlets or stuff. Um, and it, it's great value. But then going back to when I said I, I couldn't cycle anymore, and I'm going to try and take this running stuff a bit more seriously. Um, let's just try something else out. Um, and the very first branded shoe I got was a Nike Zoom Fly 3. Right. Um, okay. Which just, just happened to be down the side there. You see, I keep them all. Oh, wow. I, yeah. um, if anyone wants them, you know the offer's there still. Um, <laughs> What size are you? Nine and a half UK. That's that's uh, the problem. See, apart from in Adidas, Adidas I don't find fit true to size, uh, and rather like you, I love the Boston Twelves. Yeah, um, absolutely you know, love them. I've, what I've really noticed with the Boston Twelves lately is um, when I first got them, they were actually quite a hard shoe. Yeah. It felt quite quite solid under my feet, but I liked it. It was fine, but they've definitely softened up. Yeah, and, and I actually. I'm like I like them more and more. They start they're starting to feel a bit more like my um, what's them other ones? The Takumi. Takumi Sen. Yeah, they're starting to feel a bit more like that, which which I really enjoy actually. Yeah, um, great shoe. Yes, absolutely. And I'll be honest, um, I think over the past year, I have switched from being a Nike fanboy to being absolutely sold on Adidas. Yeah. Um, totally, they're just weird sizing. So I go from being, uh, say, I'm a nine and a half in Nike, in Saucony, in Asics, Adidas. I've got some in 10, some in 10 and a half, some in 11. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I definitely think that the form and the plate makes a big, big difference. All of my best times are in plate to choose. Right. Uh, with Do you the, train all the time in plates? No. No. Um, in fact, to be honest, given the fact I'm more an Adidas guy these days, their shoes don't tend to be plated. Um, like they use it. energy yeah. rods. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so recommendations, you know, so like if I was going to say to anyone, with you on the Boston, a fantastic everyday shoe. Uh, great for sort of like just steady runs and stuff. Um, Takumi Sen is possibly the best 5 and 10K shoe I've ever ran in. Um, and I have the Nike Street Fly, um, which is, I guess, Nike's equivalent to it. I've had um, Saucony Endorphin Speed, Speed and Pro. Um, I've had um, New Balance uh tcs uh but that takumi sen for those shorter distances it's just it's got something don't know what it's it is it. but it's got something so like you um i i actually for once i haven't bought the new version so last year i bought the eight this year i bought the nine <laughs> next year i'll buy the 10 and get yeah. them at a, a, a discount but that shoe is just outstanding so for a novice for a novice um, in this conversation here i'm a bit lost who who, who makes that yeah. shoe adidas and what is it the adidas what takumi sen i've never heard of that but it sounds like you're both loving that it, oh, it's a great it's a great shoe yeah I, I i do any any sort of efforts that i do um and particularly if i'm doing um a part run say 5k i'm chucking right. that on my foot it's 
And a lot of I've heard I've heard some people say they really like running in it, but they find it uncomfortable. But the, but they get good times. I actually find it really comfortable. It suits my mm. foot perfect perfectly. Um, yeah, I, I would I would wear that every day if I could. But obviously, I I, I wear the Boston's yeah, for yeah. most of my stuff. I think it's probably fair to say that it's it's definitely a race shoe. Yeah. Um, it's not plush. Mm. So you no. don't have a padded tongue. You've got a sliver of material at the tongue. The laces are quite narrow. And if you don't get it right, they can cut into the top mm. of your foot. Um, but for the pop and the proportion that it gives you, for 5 and 10 Ks, I don't think I've known a shoe as good as it. Uh, it's probably up there in my top three shoes of all time. Now that's the shoe, actually. If I'm honest, it's. I mean, I know we spoke about before having having spending limits, almost uh, self-imposed spending limits on shoes, and mine tends to sit up to about 150 pounds. But that's the first shoe. I I, I was I was like you. I bought I bought the Takumi Sen eight, um, so I got it on a really good discount. Um, I think I paid something like 85 quid for for a pair, something daft like that. So so real real bargain. But actually, that's the shoe that I put on my foot and went for a run and thought, oh, okay. Um, I've I've spoke about never spending a lot of money on a shoe before, but that's the shoe that made me think I understand why people do, because it it it, it, it whether it's psychological or not I don't know, but it definitely made me feel like I was flying compared to wearing whatever else. Um, really does make you feel like you, you're going quick. Great great shoe. I think the other good thing about it it's so light, which helps. There yeah. is literally no weight to it, so it's put it on your foot and forget about it. Yeah. And that's the thing when they they brought out the nine and the ten, the only real difference from what I hear was the the upper was slightly different, um, yeah. but it was all about oh it's lighter. But you were talking like a gram lighter or something like that. Yeah. You know, it's, because it's already so light that they they couldn't really shave much more off it, could they? No, I think the ten. You know, I'm I know you don't do shoe reviews, and I'm trying to think back. But I think the ten might have carbon rods rather than glass fiber rods in it. Right. Um, but you know, to be honest, for the the money that you save in the nine to ten in that that thing, it was I just get the nine. Yeah. And the nine is no, basically actually. identical to the eight. Things have moved on. And and so, when when you talk about, I know you, you talked about decathlon clothing and stuff like that, but you did you did specifically say uh, when you're training, do yeah. you? tend to run at races in in more expensive kit or yes. anything specific yeah you do um so i have vest wise i tend to use nike the aero swift right. tops um i then like yourself i wear sort of like compression shorts um and i use skins compression shorts um use skins for years they just work for me um yeah. Depends whether I want to carry a phone. Series three has a pocket in for your phone. Series five has more compression, but doesn't have a pocket for your phone. So it's like, uh, mm, yeah, which one do yeah. I go for? And then just a oh. pair of split shorts over the top of those. Um, and that all boiled down to the fact that my missus was saying, you can't run in just sort of like skin tight <laughs> cycling shorts. Yeah, why not? <laughs> why not I um, um, so I was just going to say on that I when I first started running I just got the first pair of New Balance shorts I could find off the internet running shorts men's and they were a bit short short not something I was used to playing football all my life it wasn't like a shot I'd ever wore you see them in the 80s playing football um, but the people running them so I started running in them and the, the girls were like dad you can't go in them I was like why and they were like <laughs> You can see everything, like you're not hiding anything. <laughs> and after on reflection, I did start wearing some cycling shorts underneath. And then a few weeks ago, the cycling shorts weren't available. So I put the, just the short shorts on again. And I looked in the mirror and I thought, I, I see it now. A year down the line, how did anybody let me go out and put <laughs> these on? It's ridiculous. I could have got arrested. <laughs> my, my wife bought me a pair of them. She bought me a pair of Nike running shorts, uh, like split shorts. Um, I I haven't worn outside the house yet. Don't honestly, <laughs> unless you're going to go underneath. No. Wear them over your cycling That's what shorts. I do. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're not no. we're not ready for that. <laughs> um, no. But where where are you now? Are you your daily trainer though? What 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 are you wearing? Um, 
I have new. I was just going to say, is, is it even um, a question? Do you have yeah. a daily trainer? Because you've got a choice. It's like Willy Wonka's chocolate factory in there for shoes. I think. <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that is I have, and you know, I think all the brands. I'm their perfect customer. Let's face it. Yeah, <laughs> um, I have I have that money to spare, and I can buy these things. So I have different things at the different jobs. Uh, if I'm going out real, real easy. Um, I still like the Nike Invincibles, um, which is a Zoom X form. Um, so last one of the nights this week, I was doing sort of like five, six K, something like that, at relatively slow pace and stuck them on my feet. The threes are not as good as the twos and ones. Uh, actually, I've never ran in the twos. The wife has. I've only ran in the ones. The threes are nowhere near as good as the ones. Right. There, there is some heel slippage, some heel rub, but you can get around that and they'll do for the odd mile. Steady miles to Boston, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and Freddie, you're absolutely right. The, it gets better the more you're running it because that it really does. The light strike foam breaks in, break sort like it breaks out and gets softer. And the light strike pro, which is in the in the tour, is just an awesome foam anyway. Yeah. Um, and then for longer runs so you know if i'm doing sort of like a, a, a sunday long run but without any marathon pace efforts or anything in um i absolutely love the prime x strong added as prime x strong all oh, right wow. uh, which is 50 mil stack yeah um strictly speaking illegal for races um yep. well for elites at least um but it just it protects your legs. So I actually went, I did 8K a night just before this. And it was it was supposed to be easy. I ended up, I don't know what I ended up doing. Um, I just seemed to be a mismatch, a, a mismatch of, of different speeds and stuff. But I put them on and my legs feel great. Um, so I, I tend to sort of like, depend upon what I do, I have different shoes that I go to. Um, You've got the probably the best shoe rotation out of anybody <laughs> because you've got so many. You can just keep the the problem is I probably haven't got a shoe rotation. I have right what I feel so I I don't have sort of like this shoe for this, this shoe for that, this shoe for the other. It's what I feel like running in on the day. Um yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know, I saying that Takumi Sen is one of my all time favourite shoes. My all time fit well, my other two all time favourites, the Vaporfly. I don't think right. you can go wrong. I think have you got a pair of the Vaporfly, Freddie? No, I don't. No. No. Um Absolutely fantastic shoe. Um, again, I think it's got worse as it's got more models down the line. So the one was just my very first pair of those I bought off eBay. I took a chance because it was a little bit like Nike. You know, they put stuff out and it sells out in two seconds. Yeah. Um, couldn't get them for love no money. So I bought a pair off the internet, took a chance, and I, I struck lucky. Um, and those shoes were just awesome. Um I still have another pair of Vaporfly ones, but they're getting very old now. The twos were all right because they used the same midsole design. They just changed the upper. The threes, they changed everything. And it right. got wider and it got probably more user-friendly for more people. Uh, um, okay. So the use case became for, for more people, not for just out-and-out out racing, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, and then the other one, again, a shoe you can't get anymore. Um, the Adidas, Adidas Adios Pro 2. Right. Um, I picked that up. You know, it was 200 quid shoe originally. I picked it up for about 60, 70 quid. Um, and it's just so good. And I have scoured the internet to try and find another pair. No and reason. can't. You know, Star Fitness, going back to Star Fitness again, they've got them in about size five, but I'm a, I'm a size that a lot of people take. Um, yeah, uh, I like Star Fitness, by the way. I, I, I sign up to their, uh, is it £10 a year delivery or whatever it is? Yeah. I, I sign up to that. I, I like them. I borrow the 40 runs um, discount mm -hmm. code as well. And, and yep. yeah, they're, they're a great shop. They are. Um, yeah, for anyone who's not in Newcastle, um, sorry, but they do have a great website. Um, and you can spend an absolute fortune in there. 
Steve, yeah. just on that, while and we're on another subject of local, I don't know if you know, but just up the A19, about halfway between me and you, we've got Dalton Park, and there's an Adidas outlet store there. Oh, yes. Yeah. I, I, oh, I yes. picked up the Boston 11s for a bargain, an absolute bargain. Yeah. But I've seen the Adi, Adi, Adi Pro ones them. in there. I don't know if it was a three or a two, but at the time, it wasn't on my radar, but they do get them in. Yeah, I picked both my twos and threes up from right. that shop. Um. I think I got the threes for about 130 mm. quid and the twos are safe for like 60, yeah. 70. Um, and yeah, it, it's handy. Funny enough, closer to you, the one at York has more selection than the one at Dalton. Oh, really? Ah, right. Yeah. I was trying to persuade the missus to go down to York. <laughs> um, <laughs> why? I just fancy a day out at a running yeah. shoe shop. <laughs> <laughs> of course. <laughs> um <laughs> But no, uh, I'm I'm definitely of the opinion that, with the exception of certain things like the Alpha Fly threes, I'm trying to buy older models because yeah. you know the changes are just always ever so mm. slight. I think the Boston, sorry Scott, the Boston twelves are a big step up from the Boston eleven. I love the elevens, but I, um, I, I, I felt like imposter buying them, and I thought they were brilliant. And at first, I thought it's a placebo. This, so I probably will upgrade to the twelves because I really like the experience of the elevens. Yeah. I'll get through the Manchester yeah. Marathon with them and then they'll go into the, the B rack and I'll upgrade, but I'm not before the marathon because everyone keeps telling me don't buy new <laughs> shoes for the marathon. So <clears throat> no. no, I think um make certain whatever shoes you've got. Stick to I them. think the, the the swings and roundabouts to that, because shoes do deaden after a period mm. of miles. Um and if you have a lot of miles in your Boston's, yeah. um, then it might be worthwhile picking a new pair up but actually doing a couple of runs in them yeah. first. Um, but And you can still get the Boston 11s at Dalton mm. Park and stuff because I was there two yeah. weeks ago. Um, so, you know, that's the only thing I would say around that is, and Freddie, that's why all those shoes went on your yeah. post. That, that not because they're not wearable. It's just the foam deadens after a while and you don't right. get the same response and feedback um, that you do when they're box fresh. But the really good thing about you posting that on the group when you offered up your shoes for free, what you're, you're right. It's not because I had these new shoes you can go and run with. No, it's guys, you can try your feet in them yeah. to see that they fit you. Is this, is this size? Is this the size? If you're normally a nine and a half, try this on and see if it actually mm. fits your foot, which I thought was a great idea. And, really you know, idea. I'm, I'm happy to do, I've still got quite a few and I'm happy to redo that by all means. You know, I'll send yeah. you, I'll email you a list through where I've got Freddie and you can put them wherever you want. Yeah. And again, okay, amazing. If, if people, you know, are happy to pay for the postage, I will gladly send them the shoes. And it's funny. I, I remember um, one of the guys who got a pair off you, um, uh, Sean, his name was, yeah. um, who's a friend of mine. Um, he was saying, so he messaged me before he reached out to you saying, come on, is this a joke? Is this, is this guy just trying to get money out of me or something? Um, but it's genuine. It's genuine. Yeah. Steve, Steve will send you, you. You pay the postage. He will send them out to you. Uh, let, let me say, I will send them within the UK. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I, I will put that stipulation on because yeah. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm not paying customs fees and all of that. So God <laughs> knows what they're doing. God knows what no. fees are like now at the places. But I will yeah. send them to anyone in the UK. So like for the cost of postage, I will send you a list of what I've got um, and what mileage, because I'm such a geek that I have the mileage for every shoes that I've got. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, you know, once more if you know if anyone wants it. and if you know i said they are all runnable in um probably not raceable but it right. lets you know does that shoe work for me because i think that's what you find yeah. with shoes you go out and you spend a fortune and actually it doesn't work for yeah. me and i've had you know two or three instances of that where you drop a lot of money on a shoe you go out you do a couple of runs and all of a sudden that doesn't yeah. work yeah yeah right right um yeah i can attest to that one um so we've got some questions steve that i like we're going to try and yes put people in the hot seat um when they come on and ask the, ask yep. the same questions so um i'll start with this one do you do you listen to music or not when you're training yes i do absolutely um i tend to use i will be honest i have moved over and i'm very much a convert to shocks because i like to be hearing what's going on around yep. me um, Interesting. But sorry, there, 
as I said, there, there is a, an addendum to that. If I'm going out for a long run, I will tend to use Apple earbuds because for some reason, any text which people send through, that gets played in the apples, but doesn't get played yeah. in the shocks. Gotcha. Um, but yes, absolutely. So I, I like that music on there just as a, um, I guess so I don't hear my own breathing and footsteps. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Scott's actually just bought himself Literally, a Literally, uh, yesterday they arrived. <clears throat> I got the uh, the shocks open run. Um, I'd read yes, about I the open run I've and got. the open run pros, and there was very, very little difference, but it was like 50 quid price difference. And it was things like you got a hard case with the pros. I already have a hard case from the aftershocks I had a couple of years ago that broke. Um, they're now called shocks. So I thought I'll buy the open pros. Took them out yesterday. Love them. Absolutely love them. Um, like the fact, yeah. like you just said there, Steve, I can hear everything around me. And if anyone, anyone hasn't tried bone conduction headphones, I would highly recommend them because the audio quality is really good. Obviously, it's not going to be as good as the, the Apple um Earpods, and if you're an audio file, you're going to notice the difference. But for me, if you just want good, solid sound and your music coming through quite clearly, but at the same time, you can hear the trucks and the double decker buses coming up the road over your shoulder, these are perfect because it's a weird sensation when you first put them on. It's a lot to take in. Um, but once you get used to it, I love them. And mine arrived yesterday and I took them out and I did a 5K yesterday. And yeah, they're good. Um, so, what kind of music do you listen to? Mine or Freddie's? Um, <laughs> oh, I know where this is going. Probably, probably leaning more towards oh, Freddie. I'm oh, afraid. Yeah. Um, <laughs> two nil. Um, That's two nil. Yeah. Um, yes, I am. I am very much. Uh, if the hair doesn't give it away, yeah, I'm very I, much a rock I kind of knew the answer to this before I asked that question. Yeah, I had a feeling. <laughs> yeah. uh, your favorite running song? Do you have a power song when you're struggling and you kick that on and it suddenly gees you up like a gel? I have numerous things. So my go-to stuff for long runs is Iron Maiden. Um, and I have a couple of songs that, that always get me. So Rhyme of the Ancient Run Mariner. The no, definitely not. <laughs> I've heard that song way too many times. Uh, I, don't get me wrong, it's good. Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. Yeah. Um, and actually quite a lot of this stuff post-Reformation, the more sort of like they went a little bit more progressive. Um, and I like the long stuff. Uh, so if something's 10 minutes long, I know that's 2K yeah. or 2.5K or whatever it is, yeah? yeah so I like yeah. the long stuff. Um, if I'm going for tempo, funny enough, ACDC works really well because basically everything they write is in four on the floor yeah. um, and pretty much all the same tempo. So Good. you know yeah. what you're running to to, to that. Um, if I'm doing interval stuff, I will go heavier and faster. Um, early Metallica works well. Yep. Uh, and I mean early Metallica. Um, I'm talking before the Black Album, yeah? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So yeah. stuff like Seek and Destroy. Um, yeah. Ride the Lightning real, and all that. Ride the Lightning, yeah, yeah. Um, that type of stuff. And then if I'm just going out for fun, then I go back to um, 80s hair metal stuff. Uh, so your Motley Crue's, Guns N' Roses, Poisons, and some of the more obscure stuff, which I, I tend to have as well. Um, just because that's, you talk talking to Manchester, I spent an awful lot of time. There was a place in Manchester called Rockworld, yeah. um, Jilly's Rockworld, um, which I spent an awful lot of Saturday nights, Sunday mornings in when I was at university. Although I went to university in Lancaster, it was 40 miles down yeah. the M6. And it was, you're talking late 80s, early 90s. And it was the place to go. It was the equivalent to the Mayfair in Newcastle, um, right. if anyone remembers the Mayfair. Um, <clears throat> and it was just awesome. So that brings back memories of being <laughs> Love it. Love it. But Iron Maiden will, will work for me. And I've, so like the last two marathons I've done, so Amsterdam and Manchester, I just put Iron Maiden on shuffle. There you go. And yeah. weirdly enough, Manchester, the last song that played when I'd hit the wall and I was struggling like hell was a song called The Loneliness of the Long Distance Runner. <laughs> I know the one very well from the Somewhere in Time album. Absolutely, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love that one. And I just love thought, it. you're just taking the mick out of me here, lads. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Favourite event, Steve? 
what's the one event you're like i know you've done pretty much every uh you said every um what's it great north run since you started yeah love the great north run yeah what's your favorite event is it um so my favorite ever event was great north run but it was a great north run that took place the year after lockdown when they did the alternate Mm -hmm. route right so it started from um the, like the central motorway and I finished back sort of like on the great north road opposite the town moor for some reason that just worked for me um i got to run past my front door twice which was brilliant um nice. i think the crowds were awesome because they hadn't been one for a year and a half because of lockdown and everything and it was just a fantastic event so my that's my favorite individual event as a series of events um I absolutely love the Blade and Race. Mm-hmm. Um, absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, didn't manage to get in this year because he moved to a ballot entry for this year. Um, have you done it before? Uh, yes, once, yeah. long time ago. Yeah, it's it's all it's yeah. just brilliant. Yeah, the fact that you get stotties in beer at the end. <laughs> yeah. Um, for anyone listening outside well. of the northeast, do you want to explain what a stotty is? Uh, Stotty, in in the case of actually, I wouldn't need to explain this. Is basically a ham and peas pudding sandwich. In uh, how do you describe a Stotty? It's a sort like of like a, big, a thick, heavy yeah, heavy bread, bread roll. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> and people are going to say, "What's peas pudding?" <laughs> Oh, don't start. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair, I've got two northern lads on the line here. Um, maybe it's only me they can understand right now. Yeah. So sorry for that. Yeah. <laughs> Where are you from originally, Freddie? Uh, well, tricky one. My my dad's from Oxford. Um, yeah. My mum's from Darlington, uh, right. and I grew up I grew up over, overseas. So I, I didn't enough. actually move to the UK till I was a teenager, um, which is why I nobody can ever say where my accent's from I don't know if you notice it's not you you kind of assume I'm from down south somewhere but you couldn't you couldn't say where and that's just because I just have a a non-accent because I traveled so much so, yeah. fair enough but yes yeah. blade and race for anyone who hasn't done it it's just it's an awesome atmosphere yeah what's your bucket list bucket list event that you haven't done yet that you'd love to London marathon right yeah Sim- oh, that was yeah. a quick answer. That's that's oh, yes. obviously one that you're desperate for. Yeah, absolutely. You know, if you think, let's be honest, the Great North Run is the top of the top for half marathons in the UK. No shadow of a doubt. Anyone who's everyone has done the Great North Run. Um, all of the greatest runners in the world. The fact that Mo Farah chose the Great North Run for his final ever race, I think that says yeah. it all. Yeah. The equivalent for a marathon and all all respect to Manchester, Edinburgh, Newport, Brighton, London is the go-to mm. one. Um, and unfortunately, you know, at, at this point, I say it's so like 12, 13 years of ballot entries and I haven't got in. I think the amount of money you have to raise for charity, especially in the economic climate we're in, you know, you're talking about two and a half thousand pound. And how do I persuade someone to sponsor me for something I do mm. anyway? Right. I think, I it, you know, it. it's easy to sponsor someone for a challenge, yeah? Yep. Um, but, oh, can you sponsor me to go and run a marathon just because I really <laughs> want to do London? Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's a two-word answer to that. And it's... Yeah, and, you know, even even for those that, you know, some people would be like, right, I'm going to do a marathon. They're one and done. That's it. Just doing it once. Even for them, even, you know, no matter what their condition or whatever, two and a half thousand pounds yeah. is a lot of money to raise. Yeah. That's really hard. To, and the, to do that the problem with it is is you actually sign a contract and if you right. don't raise that you are personally liable for it that's crazy crazy and it's all um, down to the the business model i guess of, of london marathon yeah. um and the, the other problem it does and you know i know our time society massive charity everyone knows but for little charities it becomes almost impossible for them to get to get charity places for events such as the london marathon because the charities themselves have to buy those golden tickets from london i see yeah Yeah. so all of the charities your alzheimer's and the big ones your alzheimer's your uh cancer research your marie curie they all Mm. buy what's called golden tickets and it gives them a set number of places which they can auction off 
the reason why you have to raise so much is they've got to cover the cost of those golden ticket mm. places. Yep. Um, but then your little charities don't get a, a chance. Um, and the only way they get it, they actually get any sort of uh, sponsorship is if people get a place themselves and then, you know, do it off their own back. So I, I find that the business model difficult for London, but it is the one I want yeah. to do. I, I guess I guess to play devil's ad- advocate in, in their defense, if you like, is I know a local event can cost a fortune to put on simply because the if you want especially if you want a closed road you've got to pay for that the count the count the council put whatever bill they want to on it london mm. must cost an absolute fortune to put a race on and, and i know there's a lot there of people are, enter it go on. and yet there are a lot of closed road, road races in london if you actually go through the calendar there right. are actually the, you know, it's a london marathon there's the winter 10k which has just happened the a6 10k which is in july the hackney halves half marathon the um then there's the big half i think which is the week before the great north run so that's five or six races that take place within that central london belt um so it's not something they're not used to um in london i guess um and yes i I, I I try to protect you I try, I try to stick up for them. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get the, I, I, you know, I know everyone has to make a, a crust. I just yeah. think it, it's, it's now become more a charity money raising thing mm. than a running thing. Right. Which I think I, I find a little bit difficult. Mm. That's Apologies that. to anyone who doesn't agree with me. Um, and I know there is, having raised money for Alzheimer's as Scott is, I know there is a place for that. Um, yeah. I think it's just trying to find the balance, which is, is difficult, I fully admit. And this is the way, the way I'm doing Manchester. I got in off my own back and I got an email from Manchester saying, would you like to run for any of these charities after I'd got my place secured? And it was just a list of, and I thought that's where the idea came from. I thought, oh yeah, that'll do. So I didn't actually have a limit to raise for them. Um, so I just thought, yeah, I do cool. that, and they they sent me all the the advertising stuff and the the charity raising stuff. Yeah. But that was after I'd secured my place. But yeah, I know the ones you mean as well, mm. Steve. Where you are accountable if you don't hit the the target, and they are they're astronomical. Yeah. Jamie was on about the Ironman competition and how much it's costing to do that without sponsorship, and it will get like yeah, five hundred quid to do the race. Yeah. We're yeah. getting into the realms of becoming an elitist sport. To just to get over the line and 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 it compete, you know. Do you know? I, I just saw um, on Instagram. I'm glad you just reminded me there. We're going going back a step to when we were talking about clothing before. There was a, a lady that put a post on Instagram, and she wanted to buy the new Courtney DeWalter shorts. And you know, she wears them mm. big baggy shorts, doesn't she? And she's bought a new pair out, and they were 180 pound a pair of shorts. And and her words were. This is meant to be an inclusive sport, wow. and and you've got companies charging one hundred and eighty pounds for a pair of shorts. That's a nice pair of shoes. Why why are shorts costing that much? And how much does it cost to manufacture? That's a question. Uh, and you know, I, I I absolutely agree with that. You know, I I made a choice to go out and spend a fortune on shoes. We can joke about it, but you know, I'm in a I'm in a lucky position where I have that yep. disposable mm. income. Yeah. Um, but there are plenty of people out there who don't. Right. Um, but conversely, you can go out and you can go to your local shop and you can find running shoes, you know, probably starting from 20, 30 quid, which will get you yeah. into the sport. But then I think, run. yeah, absolutely. Oh, I can't praise park run mm. enough. You know, it's, it's yeah. one of the, the best things that has brought, come to this country in terms of running for forever. Um, it's got Great. so many people in there. Uh, the range of abilities are amazing. Um, and everyone gets on in the coffee afterwards yep. and cake. Yep. Um, but I say these big races, your London marathons, your Great North runs to an extent where so many of it is going down the charity route and you have to raise thousands. Can anyone yeah. guarantee to do that? Mm. And I re- I'd really hate to think of some poor person, you know, signing up for London for a big charity, not reading the small print, you know, they've got, friends who can't afford to donate and then all of a sudden you lump with a two thousand pound bill yeah, at the yeah. end of it right yeah i struggle i do struggle with that yeah totally 
Um, right, another one. Moving on quickly. Um, I know you, I've seen you do yoga and stuff on mm. your Strava. Um, yes. But what does your strength and conditioning look like outside of running? What 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 is it you apart from? Well, I guess yoga. But what are you what are you doing? Um. So up until this year, not a lot. I did a lot of I do a lot of stretching, a lot of sort of like yoga type poses for mobility more than strength. Um strength and conditioning was very very lax i have a i don't like it <laughs> um you can possibly see behind me there's a big weights rack yeah um that's my 14 year old son who's bench pressing sort of like 70 kilos or something um and then i thought i'd better try some of this and i'm bench pressing like 30 and it's getting the mix taken <laughs> out of me <laughs> um so i have started this year um doing some proper strength stuff so mainly sort of like upper body core and leg stuff so things like uh weighted squats weighted lunges deadlifts um for for legs um and then so sort of like bench presses butterflies um stuff for sort of like your core and chest and you know just trying to put a couple of sort of like half hour sessions in a week on those but it's yep. not my favorite thing and I will be honest with you, I get more doms after a strength session than I ever do after a run. Love it. I think we're yeah. all in the same boat there, aren't we? We all try and get a bit laxy on it. Mm. But I know that is absolutely my weakness is, is not picking up that strength and conditioning stuff. I think that's a common theme as well 100%. among everybody that I know at the minute that's into running, apart from the the, the big hitters, like the 4D runs and the, the running channel guys who wax lyrical about it. and i know how important it is but the 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 regular runners like the the people i speak to we're all the same we all, we all acknowledge that strength and conditioning is hugely important and beneficial but then none of us can attest to doing that much of it it's it's wrong like i said i don't get that same i don't get that same buzz like if i go for a run even if i'm feeling really crappy before i go for a run i go for a run in any way I come back, I feel amazing. I feel energized. I feel like I'm really happy yeah. I did that. I don't get that same buzz when I come out of the gym. Yeah. 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 I think it's a tough day at work. A run just lets your mind float. Um, you know, you go out for half an hour, you go out for 40 minutes, whatever. You've, you're listening to some, some of Scott's music. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, there, and your mind you know you, it literally does it just you know your mind just wanders it takes away that stress um you definitely don't get that from in a gym or on a weights yeah. bench on a weights rack it's just hard work yeah. it isn't yeah. that it isn't for me it isn't that de-stress tool agree agree so um last time we were on with jamie um we asked him to set the question for our next guest without knowing who the next guest would be at the time. So this question's from Jamie. Um, your favourite type of run, and do you have a favourite section on a route that you like to run regularly? Now, we had a really interesting conversation about gravel and tarmac sections on the last podcast. Um, so, yeah, do you have a favourite kind of run, uh, be that distance, trail, um, speed, and then is there a particular route you take that you, you just love hitting that part of the, the route you do? Um, favorite type of run is two answers to that. One, I don't get to do enough of track. Yeah. Absolutely love the track. Spikes? Um, yes, I do have a pair of spikes. Um, I've just lost my train of so thought. You, no, sorry. So yeah, you go on. You had two. So, <clears throat> your, your tracks. You love your so, tracks. So track interval interval stuff on mm. the track because you know exactly how far it is. You can visualize it. It just works. Um, on the the road, it would probably be um longer marathon paced efforts. So like chunking yeah. it. So you might do three times five k or whatever. Um. My favorite place to run is not somewhere I go all the time. Uh, however, Freddie will be aware of this because uh, it's where the first social run ran. It's on the quayside um, and Brilliant. down Scottswood Road because actually there is no stopping and starting for traffic lights or anything like that. 
um, you don't have to worry about that. Um, so straight along like Keyside, uh, up Armstrong Drive onto Scottswood Road, right the way down to the bridge, cross the bridge and back on the other side. Um, you literally don't have to stop. Yeah, that's um, quite a long way as well that way. If you go all the way down to the bridge, that's yeah. quite a long way. Uh, but actually, if you want to go further, if you go from if you go down to Newburn and then cross right. Newburn Bridge and come back the other side, it's about 22k. Um, but it, it it's just an awesome mm-hmm. route um, yeah. because you literally don't have any worries about traffic and um, you know, so people stepping out of a driveway with a pram and you having to sort of like <laughs> slam all on which you do around the houses where I tend to run, you know, it's a, it's a, a family orientated estate sort of thing where I live. Um, and you're always wary. Um, and the other thing about the key side, especially if you're doing faster stuff, it's the, the paving's actually damn good. So there's no, um, so like paving stones, so like higgledy piggledy, which are trip hazards yeah, yeah. in the, the dark nights when you're trying to run. Um, I speak from experience here. Um, yeah. where you end up flat on your face. Um, so well, yeah, Keyside in the northeast. And, and Scott, you were on that. You were on that run, so you know exactly yeah. what he's talking about when we when we did that social run. And it was it was a really nice mm. nice place to run. I, I totally agree. And what I really liked about it was how many people were out running. Yes, there was gr- groups of people everywhere. Um, it was really cool. still. You finish it. So if you do it on a Sunday morning, you finish at Swing Bridge, and you got the. All this, the the street food oh, stores right there on the Keyside yeah, Market. We, that's yeah. where we stopped. <laughs> the smells through that place are phenomenal. Yeah. Walking through that where we finished, yeah. that, that was good. Yeah, <clears throat> totally. Man. So there you go. Right, so the two of them. I like that. Now it's your turn to ask a question, Steve. For the next guest, you you have no idea. We have no idea who that's going to be just yet. But um, if you can come up with a question for that person, um. Your one, worst eh? running experience and why? Right, nice. Worst. I'm sorry. I'm going to look rude because I know I forget, and I'm writing this down. So I'll let you carry so on talking. That for me would be. It hasn't happened yet, but I'm, I would, I'm dreading the day I have to do a Paula Radcliffe at the side of the road. <laughs> it's going to happen. Let's be honest. <laughs> As the distance get longer and the gels get more and more consumed, I've just it's horror stories. But that would be my worst nightmare. Yeah, I don't know that I have one. Um, there's nothing that really stands out where I'm like, oh god, I'd hate that to happen again. Um, but there's bound to be something. I don't know. I think maybe we spoke about this on on, on a previous episode about, but it was more about my mental uh, where I was mentally at the time, where it was like people were looking at me and and having to speed up because somebody might see me when there's someone around and and you know when I'm, if I'm walking. Then, and actually, it's when I look back at that 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 comes across to me as a bad experience. Be- and, and that was more because I, I look at myself and think, oh, I, I'm almost yeah, sad yeah. for myself. Like I'm, I'm, I'm sad that you felt that way, you know. So that's probably about the worst experience I've experienced. And that that, that dickhead that said to me about the spare, calling me I had spare tires, but um, we'll, we'll not worry about him anymore. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's uh, anyone who sticks a pair of shoes on and goes out the door. D- deserves full of full respect regardless of what speed you're going you like you're doing something to better yourself exactly. doesn't matter if you run an inch or 50 miles you know you, you're trying to make an right. improvement sack what anybody else thinks right the other thing i was going to do i know i know we're getting on for hmm. time a bit now um we we have been asked a load of questions um through the strava group i put a post on there this morning and and people have asked um if you guys have got time, I was going to we could maybe read some of these out, but we'll make these a bit yeah. of a quick fire. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to start off um, with the first one. So Gary Cooper, he said he's got a few questions to ask. Um, do any of you have plans to come and run down south? Has anyone got any? I've got no events booked in for, for short. Not yet, but there. I'm open to suggestion. Um, if something <laughs> comes up a bit more informally on the group and we want to do something, then why not? Yeah. Yeah. And, and hey, and if if Steve can get a um, a London Marathon place, then he'll be down south. But uh, no, I well, think I think at the moment, yeah. I would say I will Nothing. be I will be running in Brighton for a week and a half or so in August because um, right. I'm going on holiday and it's right in the middle of marathon training. So Brighton's fantastic to run in. Brilliant. 
Well, if uh, I'm not even sure where Gary is from, so Gary, if you're near Brighton, let's let Steve know in the group and uh, maybe get a run in. Uh, what are your long-term running goals? Mine is quite simple, just to get better at it. That's that's my. Uh, what does that look like? I've got no idea. Um, we'll, we'll we'll find that as we go. I'm not going to set myself an ultimate goal in my head, and I'll say it out loud now, proudly, that I don't mind saying it. I think one day I've got a sub twenty in me and a five k. Um, when that'll be? No idea. We're not even close to it yet. But I really do believe if I can shift the weight, I've got a sub twenty in me somewhere. That's my ultimate goal. The rest of it. I just want to enjoy it. Yeah, same. I think I would like to one day do a sub four hour marathon, but again, I think it's early doors and I want to just get this Manchester one out of the way and then do fun stuff like the old uh, the Enduro twenty four and, and I'm really enjoying running. I don't wanna don't wanna jinx it and say I'll, I will achieve this by X date. I'm just gonna keep going and accepting stupid invites to stupid things that I should probably not do, but I'm gonna do. <laughs> <laughs> Steve I will let you guess what mine is I've mentioned it a couple of times what London Marathon (laughs) absolutely so either to get a ballot place or to I think 320 sub 320 is a good for age time for my age at the moment so either of those two but London Marathon end of love it Uh, do you have an inspirational person that motivates you to keep running I actually would say not really, um, I, but there is there is a guy that I I, I watched. Uh, it must be a year or two ago now. Um, made me cry watching him, and it, and and I forget his his name is Nick something. I forget it, but he was essentially the first ever person with Down syndrome to complete an, an Ironman, a full Ironman, um, and the, to watch him do it. If, how can you not get inspired by somebody mm. like that? You know, this young lad. I think he's in his twenties has down syndrome and does a flipping iron man that's that to me i'll have to again i'll try and look for that and stick a link to that in in, in this video because that is so inspiring to watch it and i tend to not latch on to people but to stories and that story was amazing yeah yeah that's it's stories like that <clears throat> that make you realize you you've got to keep pushing to improve yourself and and, and things like that just they, they spark a fuse for me and push me on and my inspiration was was more of a reality check when i seen where i was age-wise we talked about it in the first episode but um i thought i'm going down the, the the wrong road middle age is here now and it's it's i'm slipping into a a, a place where you hear too many horror stories of it of, of people End it like the, the lives end a lot sooner than they should have, you know. And it's 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 about longevity for me yeah. and enjoying life. And as I've got fitter and the running became enjoyable, that's been the motivation. So it's just yeah, waking up and, and keeping the habit going for me. That's what I'm enjoying, and that's that's what motivates me. The yeah. the, f- the enjoyment of the run now. It's not yeah, yeah, it's no more deeper than that. No, cool. Steve, any inspirations? Two things. Uh, One is, I think, was it last year, the oldest person who finished a Great North Run, 80-odd, 90-odd, whatever it was. Brilliant. Um, I want to be doing that at that age. Yeah. But at the other end of the spectrum, the five, six, seven-year-olds that I see at Park Run every week. Yes. So it's the two two ends of the spectrum, yeah? Because one's the future and one's where I want to be. (laughs) Or want to be capable of doing that at that age. Yeah, and you know when you see the young ones in particular, so how much fun they're having. Yeah, that's the cool part. All it right. doesn't annoy me um, when they beat me. <laughs> 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 Getting beat by a seven or eight year old isn't always fun. How how do you approach running when not training for a particular race? I must admit, I struggled with this one at first, where I needed a race to concentrate on. Otherwise, I just found myself not wanting to go out. I've gone the other way now, and, and and I think that's because I enjoy my running more now. Now I've got a little bit better at it. I've got a little bit more used to doing it more often. Um, so my my approach to to running when not training for a particular event is just enjoy the run, and it just yeah. takes care of itself. Jamie you know. summed up for me perfectly two weeks ago. He said the run, the, the races are just bonuses to the to the the hobby of running. They just come along on, on the path while you're training. So I'm the same. I haven't done that many runs yet. Um, um, that many races yet sorry um i love the running the races are just a bonus that's how i yeah. look at it yeah 
I totally agree. Um, you know, I haven't, I'm not doing a spring marathon this year. I've done two back to back, so like with Manchester and Amsterdam. I thought take most of the front end of this year off. Hence why I didn't bother, didn't mind dropping out of that one a week ago. Um, I have little races coming up, which are fun things. Um, yep. Nothing that I'm that bothered about. And I'm just running with no pressure at the minute, which is good. Uh, the cool. pressure will come when I start a training plan again for Chicago. Perfect. And last one from Gary is, um, and I might have a negative answer to this, and I don't mean it to be, but which running medal are you most proud of? And I've got to be honest, I don't really give a what's it about my medals that I get from a race. They don't, they don't really have any effect on me or, or I don't, yeah, I don't care for them is the truth. And I think that's ultimately because firstly, it's, well, this sounds really crap when I say it now. I say it in my head. I was going to say, well, I was going to say it's not a winner's medal, is it? It's just because you finished a race, and I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't really take much from that because finishing the race was enough. Um, but also, I want to achieve things further down the line, and, and I, I'm not going to tie it into a, a medal. It's going to be to how I feel, and, and yeah. I'm sorry if that sounds negative, but I just don't care about it. So, the to play medal. devil's advocate and flip this, then, I am massively proud of my first one. And that was a great North run last year because that was the target. I had the nasty health scare in the January, and I trained all year to get to that September finish line. And when I crossed that line and took that medal, no matter what comes now, that was the one that started all this for me. And that, that one will take right. precedent for that'll go to my grandkids one day, hopefully. Um, that one for me is the one I'll yeah. remember because that was the first. Yeah. That's cool. I have two. On, one is Great North Run 2018. Um, it was just after I'd had shoulder surgery. Um, I was in no way fit shape to run the Great North Run, um, but I didn't pull out of that one. Um, I think I did. One hour fifty nine fifty eight, if memory serves. <laughs> um, but it would have—I said the, the route goes past my front door, and it would have been so easy just for me to step off the oh. track there and say, "Enough's enough." But I was on the comeback from injury, and I'm going to finish it, and I did. And it was just mental for me. And then the other one is Amsterdam Marathon from last October, because that was the race where everything clicked. I did everything I wanted to. My training had been great. The race went as good as you can hope in a in a race. And I got the result I wanted. So those two, for totally different, nice. exact opposite reasons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. Uh, Lee Jackson asked a question, um, two parts really. We, we've kind of answered one part, which was who inspires you. But who is your hero from Sport and World? It doesn't have to be a runner. But is, is this, I guess that's kind of asking, like, is there somebody where you look at from the, either now or from the past where you're like, that person? Not not necessarily inspire you, but that person. Like, like I could say that growing up, Sebastian Coe w was somebody that I used to love watching. If he was racing, I was watching it as, as a kid. Um, and I always looked to him as kind of like, that's the standard. That That's what So mine, is. we used to go, my dad was a running coach and we used to go to a lot of athletics competitions and we went to the European Championships at Gated Stadium, Steve. I don't know if you you remember that in the 80s, I think it was 88, 89. Yeah. And for me, it was Roger Black and Chris Hakabusi and that 4 by 400 relay team. That, for me, they were inspiring for me and I'll always remember that team. I think it was Tom McKean or Tom Keane, the Scottish guy. I think he's a police officer now. You know, when you go down the rabbit hole on Wikipedia, what happened to so and so? But um, that that four by four team back then, for me, that when I think of athletics as a kid, it was those guys. My sister was the sprinter and the sprint fan. Yeah. I was more the eight hundred, four hundred, and that that team for me was there. They were my heroes growing up. Yeah. Love it. Running wise, Steve Cram, uh, basically because he ran around the roads I lived on. I would yes. see him every day. Um, but outside of that, um, one real hero, Ian Botham. Um, wow. And secondly, probably Nick Faldo. Yeah. Um, you, just, you're a big cricket and golf fan? Uh, huge cricket fan. 
Um, yeah. And golf, yeah, I, you know, the biggest event for me yearly used to be the Masters. And it was when the Europeans yeah. were winning the Masters every year. So you had Sebi Ballesteros, Ian Woosnam, um, Sandy Lyle, Nick Faldo. We were winning it every year for about an eight-year period. And I think the year that Nick Faldo came from six shots back on Greg Norman in the final round of the Masters to win it Love is it. probably the time when I've cried most at the end of a sporting event. Yeah, yeah. Do you know, I've just I've just remembered an, an, an event that happened. It was probably around the time you were talking about, Scott, to be fair. And, and, and again, the guy didn't win. And actually, I don't think legally he finished the race, but Derek oh, Redmond. Dad. Um, dad right. carrying him around the Olympic. Was that Barcelona yeah, 80, yeah. 92? I think so. Something like that. And you watch that. And, and even now you watch that back and it's a bit blurry because yeah. it was a while ago. But um, you watch that and you think, what, yeah. a, what a hero. Didn't give up. Got it finished. Awesome. Uh, we've got Davey Earp has asked a couple here. Um, favorite post-run ritual or treat that you look forward to after a challenging workout or race? I like a nice burger. It's the truth. Nice burger and chips is probably my favorite meal when I've uh, done some hard. And wash it down with a nice cold beer. Not a cheap lager, guys. Don't be drinking fuckers <laughs> and carlins. Get, nice proper... <laughs> Get yourself a nice beer. Yeah, that's... Uh... Well, I have a ritual in our house. We, since we discovered parkrun, um, my daughter's done a few with us, but we have a, a, a bit of a ritual. So we do the parkrun and then we come back here. And it sounds so um, cliche, but poached eggs on toast and a fresh coffee and a fresh orange juice. And then we both just disappear and do our own things for the weekend. But that's like our little gathering and a habit now. Um, mm -hmm. And if I was in Hartlepool tomorrow, Freddie, you were invited for breakfast tomorrow morning, which you know, and I really apologise that I've had to cancel on you, but uh, you would have experienced that hobby. <laughs> so yeah, I like a, a, a nice poached egg and toast. Keep it simple. Mine's simple. Milkshake. <laughs> Milkshake? Yep. God, you're uh, crazy. Choi by, by choice, a McDonald's banana milkshake. Um, however, being good, I make my own with sort of like protein powder, bananas, ice cream, and milk. Is that what you were drinking when you first came no, on? That, the that, that, that was a McDonald's one. On the side of the cup. <laughs> that, yeah. that was a McDonald's <laughs> one. I love it. He's loving it. it. He's loving uh, it. I did. That's <laughs> very long. What's your favorite running book? I think that's um, an obvious one for me. It's Born to Run. Um, run that a couple of times. Think it's brilliant. Think it's inspiring. Simple. Born to run. For me, it's that one I read. I'm presuming that isn't the Springsteen autobiography. No, <laughs> it is called Born to Run, right? The one I'm thinking of. You and you guys must oh, have read if it. I have. Uh, I haven't. Oh my god! Am I going to teach you something amazing? Let me just Google search here. Yeah, Born to Run by Chris. What's his name? Christopher McDougall. I can't believe you haven't read it. Get yourself a copy of Born to Run by Chris McDougall. It is about the best book you'll ever read when it comes right. to running. Go, it's it's all about the Tarumara and, and people like that, which are like this in South America, I think it is. They're um, they're, they're they're essentially these people that 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 win all the races down that part of the world. They they wear ridiculous clothes, like the women wear these big dresses, and they make their own shoes out of tires and stuff like this, and then they'll go and run a hundred miles and win. What's it um, called? But it's a really, born really to run. born to run. Just it now. Yeah, it's an amazing book. I'll add it to the list. Nice. <clears throat> um, I will pick up next if I may. Yeah. I haven't yep. really read read many running books. I've read just about every cycling one you could think of, because um, that's where I came from. The one that I would say running wise was I can't remember his name. It was Chris Evans' sidekick on the breakfast show on Radio 2, the guy who did the sports, the Greek guy uh, who did the sports stuff. Yeah. I can't remember his name, but he wrote a book, and it was broken down into 42 chapters or 26 miles, one of the two, I can't remember which, one for each mile or kilometre of a marathon with his stories in. But it was because it was all of, it wasn't just running, there was all of his other anecdotes from his life in, I guess, showbiz yeah. in there. 
Um, there was that one, and there was one called Running with Kenyans. Again, I can't remember the author, but it was a guy who went out and trained with Kenyans for three or six months and just em- immersed himself in their culture. I think that's I the it. book I've I... just finished. Um, was it by a Swedish guy? Did he live out in the I sticks was, and then yeah. he went to Kenya and he ran yes. with them and he lived with them for yeah. six months and lived and breathed? And yeah, it is brilliant. And it's the only, run- I'll be honest, it's the only running book I've read. Um, finished it. I think I finished it before the last podcast and I mentioned it on there. Um, it's, it's brilliant. It was totally engrossed and he kept a journal for four years living in the woods in Sweden. And then he, um, he was a good runner anyway, but he wanted to see what the elites were really up to and the, why the Kenyans were so much better than the rest of the running world at that time. So he went and lived with them and trained with them for six months. Um, yeah, it was, was an interesting read because there's not, there's no, um, no magical, um, portion or science behind it. They're just out every day and eating a very, very slim, strict diet because not by choice either. It's just, that's what's available, but because of the, the, the altitude as well. Um, well, the results speak for themselves, don't they? Right. Next one from Davey is, and I've, I've actually got a little embarrassing one. It's can, can you share a funny or embarrassing moment you've experienced whilst running? Mine, I don't mind putting my hands up in it. I've never, I never actually admitted this before. Um, and I didn't get it on video, which was a bonus. But I actually did a 5K race, um, which as soon as the starting gun went bang, my bladder went, oh, you're full. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Um, and by the time I finished that race, all I will say is I didn't need to go to the bathroom anymore. <laughs> we'll leave it there. Well, touch wood. I've got nothing like that yet. Like I said earlier on, like I've not had to Paula Radcliffe it or anything. Um, but as the races get longer, who knows? But no, I've got nothing on that one. Um, <laughs> I, I will go with that dodgy gel I had in Manchester last year. Um, right. Literally sort of like just throwing up straight afterwards on the side of the road and thinking, oops, someone's got to oh. clean that up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, we're on to Kevin Scott now. He's got a couple of questions here. Um, any running kit that you've tried and hated and only used once from shoes to clothing? I've actually, I think in, in arm's reach, yes, I have. I've actually got something here that I bought. This is a running belt. Hopefully you can yeah. see that, that I bought um, from X Miles. Um, I bought it about two weeks ago. It's the largest size they do. It was 38 quid, which is ridiculous for a running belt, and it don't fit. So off you go. <laughs> Waste of time. Waste of time. Doesn't fit. It's it's the largest they do. It claims it goes up. I'm not going to embarrass myself and say how big it claims it goes up to. It definitely <laughs> doesn't go up to the size they say it does. I can get it on, and I can put things in the pocket, but by heck, I ain't getting them out in a hurry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mine, mine's a, oh, no, just got an image of you now with the missus Sorry. trying to cut you out of that belt. Sorry. Um, mine's the, the Hocker Solimars. Um, I bought these when I first started running and everyone was turning up in these trainers I'd never heard of with a HOK written all over the side of them in gaudy colours. Looked really cool. Didn't know anything about them. Found a pair online. I thought they'll do. I've worn them once. I hate them. And I've mentioned this and yeah. my wife's heard this podcast several times now and then she realized that's why they still look shiny brand new under the bed and haven't been up uh alpha fly twos as previously mentioned and i also once bought a pair of brooks i don't know what model they were i could i've got it saved down on strava somewhere which i ran once in and never again no i I never went back to brooks ever since i'm wearing them now (laughs) Ghost 14s. I love them. <laughs> I'm, talk amongst yourselves. I'll tell you what they were <laughs> in a second. <laughs> Next one from Scott, uh, from Kevin, sorry. Kevin Scott is favorite part run. Mine, I'm going to just say uh, Blythe Links part run because it's the one I do the most. It's, it's, I'm, I have about one, two, three, I have four or five actually within 10, 15 minutes of the house. Um, so quite lucky in that respect, but Blythe is the one that I like to go to the most. It's 
it's a good size. They have anything from three to 600 people yeah. on a busy day. Um, uh, yeah, I know the route like the back of my hand, and I just like that one. Mine is my local one as well, Wynyard Woodland. It's a trail run. It's fairly new as well. I think we're only still on 40-odd something since the start. Um, it's very small. It's between 60 and 120 people maximum on it, um, but it's fully enclosed, and it's an old railway line out and back. Um, so that's my favourite, and the, the best one I think I've experienced is I did Edinburgh, Holyrood, and that's around the back of Arthur's seat. And really, I wanted to keep stopping and like just enjoy the view, and then I remembered I was on a run. Um, yeah, that one is pretty hard, but gorgeous scenery. scenery. Yeah. <clears throat> Love it. Um, local one, and the one I've done the most, and I, I know people, so it's friendly, is Riverside in Chester Street. Uh, my favourite one, um, only done it once, Hartlepool, because it's fast if, if the wind yeah. isn't yeah, up, yeah. and I guarantee that. I think I, I was lucky enough to do it early this year, and I think it ran about 2040, um, and it was just awesome. But I would imagine if it gets windy, it's horrible. I did it last weekend in the wind, and um, it was brutal. Yeah, um, but Edinburgh as well, but not the one you did. Um, the one up the coast, which I did while injured um, with a torn hamstring, and I did it in 44 minutes. And it's actually the park run where the guy who holds the current park run, park run world record, which I think was done last year, mm. it's where he did it at. He did it in like 13 minutes or something. I did it in 45, hobbling around on one leg, and I want to go back there one day and smash it. Love it. Uh, Kevin, ask one more question. That's actually directed at me. You guys probably never heard of this. How much does Freddie love Furnace Bank? Freddie hates Furnace Bank. And Furnace Bank, for those that are not from where I live, um, is about it's about 60 to 80, 80 metres stretch of road that is on about an 89% incline. Um, or so it feels like. And it's one of those roads. It's actually one of the hills that I've ran where I put it on video and everybody replied to it saying, Christ, it actually, because video normally flattens yeah. out hills. And they looked at that one and were like, actually, that looks like a bloody steep hill. So you can imagine what it's like uh, in real life. And and it, yeah, to the point, my last time that I went to Furnace Bank, I drove to the bottom of it so I didn't have to run, <laughs> right, uh, run up. <laughs> so I started, at, I started at the bottom of the bank because it, it's a right bugger. Now we've got, so we've got a couple more here from um, Peter Mitchell, but I actually would like to keep a couple of these because I think we could go into yeah. these a little bit. And I, I'll, I'll say what they are, but let's not necessarily answer them now. Money, no object, running shoe. Um, what would you buy, basically? I think we've kind of touched on that a bit today anyway. Um, but then he asks about uh, your running watch choice. I think that that's a deeper conversation we, we yeah. could have another time. And one for Scott, what are your goals for the Manchester Marathon? I can answer that one quickly. Um, <clears throat> originally, Peter was to go sub four hours, but... Given the the setbacks I've had on the training, I'm just going to get around it now, um, and then I'll maybe pick another marathon back end of the year or early next year and try for that sub four. I just want to enjoy it. I want to enjoy the experience. So yeah, that's it. Love it, love it. Yeah, that's all. The, that's all the questions we've um, we've got on there. So that's cool. Anything anyone wants to add before we? Uh... Knock it on the head. No, it was great to meet you, Steve, finally, because I see you, you're on my Strava pretty much every day, logging something. And we we do exchange messages now and again in the group chat. So yeah. it was great to meet you properly. And uh, No, absolutely. Yeah, be interesting. Um, try- thank you very much for... In- go on, go on. I was going to say thank you very much for inviting me on. Uh, it's been brilliant. Um, and sorry, Scott, Freddie's music wins. No. <laughs> yeah. Of course, that's two nil to me, Scott. <laughs> no, Steve, it's been really good chatting to you, mate, and I really, I really thank you, mate. I really appreciate you that you, you came on and, and uh, shared your story a little bit with us. What I'd like to do, mate, if if you if you want, to, I'll, I'll say it now on video because I put you on the spot, so it's hard for you to say no. But it'd be nice to keep in touch with you and, and maybe get an update as as we go through the year a little bit and see see how things are going as you pro- uh, progress towards Chicago. Yeah, totally, um, no problem. That, that would be great, and, and we'll we'll speak to you just before Chicago and just after as well. I think yeah. would be really cool. Um, <laughs> so what is see, this? See happy how... me and the hopefully very happy me. Hopefully, absolutely, Come, coming back with a PB even that would be yeah. amazing. 
No, absolutely yeah, more so, than happy to. No, that would be great, mate. So, Scott, anything no, else from you? No, um, just again, thanks for everybody um, who's tuned in in the last three episodes. Uh, the feedback is brilliant. Um, still doesn't really sunk in yet that people are interested in listening to us chat like this, but clearly there's a there's a, a, a demand for it. Um, and the Strava group, again, it's just going from strength to strength. And thank you for the questions from Peter, Kevin and Davey. And uh, we've got five, haven't we? Yeah. Um, yeah, and Gary and Lee. Yeah. yeah, there's like there's regulars that pop up in the in the group chat and stuff. Um, and then there's the people that um, are on there and and just contribute now and again. And it, it's brilliant. It doesn't really matter if you're full time or just dip in and out. It's the community is brilliant. Just let's keep going. And we hit six hundred this yeah, week. Six hundred yeah, members. Noticed, yeah. Yeah which is really cool. So that's really good news. No, that's great, guys. Uh, Steve, thank you again, again, mate, for coming on. Really, really good to catch thank up you. with you. Scott, as always, yeah. a pleasure. And um, we'll, we'll speak again in a couple of weeks. So thanks, everyone, for listening. Speak to you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.